Hi everybody, Robert A. Bonavito here, New Jersey Friends Account. Today we're going to have a discussion about lost profits, the basics. This is going to be based on my education, training, and experience of 40 years in many, many trials. It's, it's going to be one video today, it's going to be the basics, but there's probably going to be about five or six other videos where we go into different topics concerning lost profits because it's, it's pretty basic, but Lost profits can be calculated, or, uh, complicated. The only, for example, what is lost profits? It's just basically the financial performance of an injured business to those that it should have been earned, but for some unlawful action. For example, we just had an international bakery that uh, couldn't put in some ovens because of an architectural issue. Well, their sales were $100 million, but they should have been $150 million. And the judge had a lot of difficulty understanding that these other sales would have been made and, and it was extremely complex we were able to prove that at least with a reasonable degree of certainty that these additional ovens would have produced X amount of product and they would have made X amount of profit so it's a simple definition but it's complex when you have to actually prove it in court before a jury and a judge complicated it is complicated to uh, do because you have to understand accounting, finance, marketing, economic principles, and much more. In this case, with the bakery, we had to understand the manufacturing process, what went into the bread, the flour, and all that type of stuff, and what costs were involved, and what costs were variable costs, what costs were fixed costs. So it is complicated. The goal of lost profits calculation is to make the injured party whole for its losses. That's the goal. Now, you, you can never show losses with absolute certainty. It's impossible. Like, I couldn't show that they actually lost $50 million in sales. But I could support it with sufficient relevant data to ma that made sense that they would have had $50 million in sales. Um, and, and that's the main goal for a lost profit calculation. My form formula is for lost profits is econ it's economic profits that would have been earned, less variable cost, right? Okay, so in the, in the bakery case, they didn't have to pay for flour. There's a lot of things they didn't have to pay for. So even though they would have had sales of $50 million, that's not their lost profits. That's their lost sales. And calculating the lost profits is pretty complex. But uh, uh, this is true because if you're unable to produce a product, that means you don't have to spend money on labor and things like that. Now, this was an operating factory, so they did have labor, but they had less labor, right? They had less purchase of product and as far as flour and stuff that went into the bread. Now, when we prepare lost profit cases, usually we revolve around uh, contracts or torts, commonly referred to as fraud or misrepresentation, patent infringement, and anti, uh, uh, antitrust work. This was uh, the 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 case we had was really a contract and a tort because the architect said they would be able to put in these ovens and they weren't able to because it didn't meet the requirements. Key elements of law of profit. Okay, proximate cause. Now, these, this is some legal issues we're going to discuss here. Uh, legal requirement that the plaintiffs must prove. Now, this is something lawyers need to prove. Okay, you know, we can help them, but they need to prove it. Reasonable certainty. Okay, How, I had to show reasonable certainty that they would have, in this case with the law, the bakery, had $50 million of sales and they would have made, you know, $20 million after the variable costs were removed. Foreseeable. It's obviously foreseeable. I mean, in this case, we had two ovens and we could we simply calculate it, uh, how many loaves of bread they would have produced per hour for 365 days and then multiply that by five years. Uh, because that's how they were offline for five years. They couldn't get these ovens installed for five years. So we were able to show that they would have produced X amount of, of uh, product over that five-year period based on these, these ovens being installed. The damage period, in our, in our case, was five years because that's when they were deprived of producing that product. Mitigation. You know, what, what could have they have done to reduce the damages? Well, you know, they, they, work, they could work more shifts. Maybe they could subcontract. In this case, there wasn't much they could do without those two ovens. Um, you know, may, may, they were already working three shifts a day. So, But you have to look at mitigation to see if they could have reduced those damages. 
time value of money. Uh, obviously, this comes into play here because we have a five-year period. They would have had those profits, and they would have been able to invest them over that five-year period. So uh, post-judgment interest, you know, again, is something you need to look at. Now, calculating lost profits involves estimating the amount of money the business would have earned in a specific time period, okay, based on what the dif disruption caused. Now, uh, calculations are often needed in legal disputes, insurance claims, business interruption cases. Now, th th I guess my case is really a business interruption case. There's several methods to use, right? You need to, when you testify, you need to have some kind of methodology. You can't just make it up and put it on an Excel sheet like you could 30 years ago or 20 years ago. And the methods we usually look at are the before and after method, you know, before the damages and after. The yardstick method, and this is the, one of the methods we relied upon because we, we knew if these ovens were installed, uh, how many loaves of bread they would have been able to produce per uh, hour, and we knew what the uh, sales price of the bread was, we knew what the variable costs were. It was a complicated calculation, but this was a great methodology to use, and the judge loved it. Uh, before and during method, a little different than the before and after. Market projection method, again, this is projecting what would have happened. Uh, discounted cash flow analysis, incremental profits method. So each of these methods has its strengths and limitations, and the choice of the method depends on the nature of the business, the type of disruption, the available data, and specific circumstances. Often a combination of methods and adjustments to a single method may be necessary to accurately estimate a profit. And like I said, in our case, um, it was complex, but really the yardstick method was a great methodology because I could, it was, they couldn't really dispute that the, these ovens would have produced a certain amount of, of, of product per hour. They couldn't defeat it. And uh, they couldn't really argue the sales price uh, they couldn't really argue the variable cost. We did our job. So, listen, guys, hopefully you like this video. If you do, please, you know, smash that like button. If you leave me a message below, me or one of my, uh, my assistants will get back to you. Thanks a lot for listening. Bye.